In the day's other news, a new court filing in the Russia probe said that prosecutors believe former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort gave campaign polling data to a Russian associate. He allegedly had ties to Russian intelligence. The disclosure suggests that Russia could have used the information in its election meddling effort. The Trump administration shifting statements on withdrawing from Syria struck sparks today with NATO ally Turkey. National Security Advisor John Bolton had insisted that Turkey promise not to attack U.S.-backed Kurdish fighters in Syria if U.S. troops pull out of the country. Bolton was in Ankara today, but Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, declined to meet with him. Instead, Erdogan used a speech to charge that Bolton had made a very serious mistake. Despite reaching a clear understanding with Mr. Trump, different voices have started emerging from different segments of the administration. We are determined to take steps against terrorist organizations such as the Kurdish fighters along with the Islamic State. We will mobilize to neutralize these terrorist organizations in Syrian lands very soon. The Turks say that the Syrian Kurds are allied with Kurdish separatists inside Turkey. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo trained his focus on Iran as he began a Middle East trip. Pompeo arrived in Jordan and met with the foreign minister. He said the U.S. will be redoubling pressure on Iran. The secretary is also trying to reassure allies in the region about U.S. plans to leave Syria. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un arrived in Beijing today and met with China's President Xi Jinping. Kim traveled by special train from Pyongyang and then went by motorcade to his meeting with Xi. He's expected to stay until Thursday. There have been reports that a second summit between Kim and President Trump is also in the works. A severe winter storm blasted much of Europe again today, dumping snow from the Alps to Athens, Greece. At least 13 have died in the past week, mostly due to avalanches. In Athens, beach umbrellas were topped with snow today. And in southern Germany, snowfall closed roads and trains and trapped hundreds in their homes. To the house sitzen kann und beim Fenster it is nice when you can sit at home and look out of the window. But I work a lot on the road. And now, for instance, I can't even get out of my driveway. And my snow remover has broken and I have to shovel. High winds have also caused flight delays and cancellations across parts of Europe. Back in this country, there is word that carbon dioxide emissions surged last year despite a decline in coal use. The research firm Rhodium Group reports that emissions rose 3.4 percent. That is the most in eight years. Much of it was fueled by economic growth. In the state of Florida, up to 1.4 million convicted felons regained their right to vote today. Voters approved the move in November. Newly inaugurated Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, however, wants enabling legislation passed before the change would take effect. Civil rights groups say that that is a needless delay. On Wall Street, the market rallied again on rising tech stocks and oil prices. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 256 points to close at 23,787. The Nasdaq rose 73, and the S&P 500 added 24. And Clemson College is football's national champion again for the second time in three years. The Tigers routed Alabama 44 to 16 last night in Santa Clara, California. Back home in South Carolina, Clemson students and fans celebrated into the night. Still to come on the news hour, the effects of the ongoing government shutdown, whether the situation at the border counts as a crisis how mentoring can improve the lives of college students, and much more.